Hello and welcome to the Mangum News President's Day Special. I'm your host, Elijah Mangum. This week we'll be discussing the end of the 2022 Winter Olympics, the Durham Report, an escapee captured, Richland swearing in a new police chief, the Nissan plant and Canton to produce new electric cars, a fire at the old General Electric building in Jackson, and a crash course on the President of the United States. Without further ado, let's begin! The 2022 Winter Olympics wrapped up in Beijing, China yesterday, with Norway coming out on top with 16 gold medals, 8 silver, and 13 bronze. Germany placed second with 12 gold, 10 silver, and 5 bronze. In third place, China with 9 gold, 4 silver, and 2 bronze. The United States, Sweden, Netherlands, Austria, Switzerland, Russia, and France rounded out the final top 10. On Sunday, February 13th, Attorney John Durham released a report from his investigations of the origins of the Russian collusion investigation against former President Donald J. Trump. The report alleges that the 2016 Hillary Clinton presidential campaign hired technology companies to infiltrate servers at the Trump Towers in New York, and the White House spying on then-candidate and eventual President Trump. The information gathered from the hack was used to form a connection between Trump and Russia. This was first reported by Fox News, with former President Trump commenting by saying it's worse than Watergate. Other news outlets cited Fox News gave misleading information, with former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton calling it a conspiracy theory during her recent speech at the 2022 New York Democratic Convention. On the same day, a manhunt was underway in Rankin County after 51-year-old Michael Wilson escaped the Central Mississippi Correctional Facility on Saturday, February 12th. Wilson was serving a life sentence for a total of eight sentences, including two for murder. Wilson was spotted at O'Reilly Auto Parts in Richland by Mason Manning on his first day on the job. He walked in saying that he had been in a car accident earlier today and that he needed uh, help trying to find a, a homeless shelter close by so he could stay the night. At first it seemed suspicious, so then I took a picture just in case, and then I saw his uh, mugshot, and that's what it was. First my heart dropped, was like, I could have been really bad, you know, I couldn't have made it out, you know, unscathed, but I was blessed that I actually made it out alive. Wilson was injured after climbing the prison's wired fence, and was unknowingly aided by Richland police, who took him to UMMC. On Monday, he was captured by police in Harrison County and was sent to a maximum security prison. On Tuesday, Captain Nick McClendon was sworn in as the chief of police in the city of Richland, succeeding longtime Chief Russell James. I, Nicholas L. McClendon, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that I will faithfully support that I will faithfully support the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the State of Mississippi, and the Constitution of the State of Mississippi, and obey the laws thereof, and obey the laws thereof, that I am not disqualified, that I am not disqualified from holding the office, from holding the office of police chief, of police chief for the city of Richland, Mississippi, for the city of, I mean, I'm sorry, for the <laughs> police chief of the city of Richland, Mississippi, Mississippi, that I will faithfully discharge that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the office, the duties of the office, upon which I'm about to enter, upon which I'm about to enter, so help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Following being sworn in, he presented his new direction for the police department. I, I developed a, a, a thing we're going to call CPAP, this Constitutional Proactive Accountable Policing. And that's what we're going to uh, implement here in Richmond, which it, we're already doing it. We're a proactive department that tries to keep the criminal element out of Richland and keep our community safe. But we're going to enhance some of those things and uh, 
get into the 21st century of policing. Nissan announced on Thursday that they will be investing $500 million into the plant in Canton to manufacture two new electric cars by 2025. Governor Tate Reeves visited the plant and made the official announcement. I couldn't be more excited about our prospects. Uh, Mississippi's economy is on fire. Uh, we are seeing um, job growth. Uh, top 10 in the nation in Mississippi for jobs recovered in the pan post-pandemic world. The reality is uh, that people are looking at states like Mississippi to invest capital. In the midst of severe storms across Mississippi on Thursday, a fire broke out of the old abandoned General Electric building in Jackson. Grayson Gordon of WAPT has the story. Troy, when we got out here, we were driving down Highway 80, and you could just see the black smoke coming from behind this building, and that is actually where the flames are at the back of this. We were not able to go back there because of our safety, but the smell was just overwhelming, let me tell you that. And this is the old General Electric plant off of Highway 80. According to the Jackson Fire Department, it has been abandoned, and we believe it was just bought a few weeks ago with plans to be completely torn down. The structure on the back is where we are seeing as actually was engulfed in flames and firefighters are not sure when they would be able to get those out. It would all depend on the fire load was actually burning. So um, like I said, we got, I think we got enough crews here now to, you know, do the work. So they're going to continue to uh, put water on the fire until it's totally extinguished. So Firefighters believe the fire broke out around 3 o'clock this afternoon and first responders have not found any victims but will do another search after the fire is completely out. And the wind is blowing a lot but firefighters do not believe that will impact where the fire was that much. And the assistant chief tells us that fires are common this time of year. Revolutionary War General George Washington served as the first president of the United States from 1789 to 1797, with John Adams as his vice president. Vice President Adams served from 1797 to 1801 with Secretary of State Thomas Jefferson. Vice President Jefferson served from 1801 to 1809 with two vice presidents, New York Senator Aaron Burr and New York Governor George Clinton. Secretary of State James Madison served from 1809 to 1817 with Vice President Clinton and Massachusetts Governor Aldridge Gary. Secretary of State James Monroe served from 1817 to 1825 with New York Governor Daniel D. Tompkins. Secretary of State and son of former President John Adams, John Quincy Adams, served from 1825 to 1829 with South Carolina Senator John C. Calhoun. Tennessee Senator Andrew Jackson served from 1829 to 1837 with his two vice presidents, Vice President Calhoun and Secretary of State Martin Van Buren. Vice President Martin Van Buren served from 1837 to 1841 with Kentucky Senator Richard M. Johnson. U.S. Ambassador William Henry Harrison only served one month until his death in 1841. His vice president, John Tyler, became president and served until 1845. The Tennessee governor, James K. Polk, served from 1845 to 1849 with U.S. Ambassador George M. Dallas. General Zachary Taylor served until 1849 until his death in 1850. His vice president, Mildred Fillmore, served from 1850 to 1853. New Hampshire Senator Franklin Pierce served from 1853 to 1857 with Alabama Senator William R. King. U.S. Ambassador James Buchanan served from 1857 to 1861 with Kentucky Senator James C. Breckinridge. Congressman from Illinois, Abraham Lincoln served from 1861 until his assassination in 1865 with his two vice presidents, Maine, 
Senator Hannibal Hamlin, and Tennessee Senator Andrew Johnson. Vice President Johnson served from 1865 to 1869. Civil War General Ulysses S. Grant served from 1869 to 1877 with Speaker of the House Sh Shuler Colfax and Massachusetts Senator Henry Wilson. Ohio Governor Ruford B. Hayes served from 1877 to 1881 with New York Congressman William A. Wheeler. Ohio Congressman James A. Garfield served only seven months in 1881 until his death. His Vice President, Chester A. Arthur, succeeded him serving from 1881 to 1885. New York Governor Grover Cleveland served from 1885 to 1889 with Indiana Governor Thomas A. Hendricks. Indiana Senator Benjamin Harrison served from 1889 to 1893 with New York Governor Levi P. Morton. Former President Grover Cleveland served from 1893 to 1897 with former Postmaster General Aldi Stevenson. Ohio Governor William McKinley served from 1897 until his assassination in 1901. His Vice President, Theodore Roosevelt, served from 1901 to 1909 with Indiana Senator Charles W. Fairbanks. Secretary of War, William Howard Taft, served from 1909 to 1913 with New York Congressman James S. Sherman. New Jersey Governor Woodrow Wilson served from 1913 to 1921 with Indiana Governor Thomas R. Marshall. Ohio Senator Warren G. Harding served from 1921 until his death in 1923. His Vice President, Calvin Coolidge, served from 1923 to 1929 with former controller of the currency, Charles G. Dawes. Secretary of Commerce, Herbert Hoover, served from 1929 to 1933 with Senate Majority Leader Charles Curtis. New York Governor Franklin D. Roosevelt served from 1933 until his death in 1945, with three vice presidents, Speaker of the House John Nance Garner, Secretary of Commerce Henry A. Wallace, and Missouri Senator Harry S. Truman. Vice President Truman served from 1945 to 1953 with Senate Majority Leader Alvin W. Barkley. The Supreme Allied Commander in Europe during World War II, Dwight D. Eisenhower, served from 1953 to 1961 with California Senator Richard Nixon. Senator John F. Kennedy served from 1961 until his assassination in 1963. His Vice President, Lyndon B. Johnson, served from 1963 to 1969 with Minnesota Senator Hubert Humphrey. Former President Richard Nixon served from 1969 until his resignation in 1972 with his two Vice Presidents, Maryland Governor Spiro Agnew and House Minority Leader Gerald Ford. Vice President Ford served from 1972 to 1977 with New York Governor Nelson Rockefeller. Georgia Governor Jimmy Carter served from 1977 to 1981 with Minnesota Senator Walter Mondale. California Governor Ronald Reagan served from 1981 to 1989 with former CIA Director George H.W. Bush. Vice President Bush served from 1989 to 1993 with his Vice President, Indiana Senator Dan Quayle. Arkansas Governor Bill Clinton served from 1993 to 2001 with Tennessee Senator Al Gore. Texas Governor and son of former President George H.W. Bush, George W. Bush, served from 2001 to 2009 with former Secretary of Defense Dick Cheney. Senator Barack Obama and served as the first black president from 2009 to 2017 with Senator Joe Biden. Businessman and reality television star Donald J. Trump served from 2017 to 2021 with Indiana Governor Mike Pence. 
Finally, former Vice President Joe Biden currently serves with the first woman to become Vice President of the United States, California Senator Kamala Harris. That's all we have for this week. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Thanks for watching, and we'll see y'all on Sunday. Happy President's Day! Thank <laughs> you.